Okay, so now I open the floor for questions. Thank you, thank you, Kaluwen, uh, 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 for a very interesting discussion. Uh, um, okay, so my question is that, um, you know, um, I mean, uh, I'm hanging down with the World Bank, right? And okay, okay, we work a lot with micro data, and we understand that, you know, there can be like a inconsistency, right, for the same country over time. For example, South Africa, for Vietnam, we also have a lot of inconsistencies over time, right? And of course, I mean, when we look at across country analysis, then of course we also see that, as uh, Carlo mentioned, right? Some country we have a lot of consumption, maybe mostly for lower income country, but then we come to lack, then we have a mostly income data, right? So, okay, so my question is that, you know, given uh, the competing, you know, like uh, databases out there, right? We have here, we have your database, and then we have some, even some companions, I mean, to it, as you said, and then the Paris School of Economics, right? I mean, uh, top income inequality database, and then the revised uh, database, the World Bank, the PIP uh, database. So, so my question is that, um, what do you think, say, for example, when we look at some countries and then we see some inconsistency, right? For example, if we look at Ghana or if we look at uh, China, right? We see all the different estimates from the different databases. Uh, which one should we choose? Or do we have to make a decision that if we use one main database, then we have to stick with it and we just ignore, you know, the other databases? So, yeah, any advice, I mean, guidance on that would be very much... Uh, uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe we take a couple of questions and then you uh, answer. You were a question, Johan. <laughs> Any other question? So maybe you can start answering. Yeah, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> any, any of you want to take a first crack? Um, okay, um, I think his um, question was about um, the fact that if you look at all the different um, databases that we have, there are differences. So which one do we choose? That basically, he's asking for advice, right, on which one to use. And I honestly wouldn't be able to give that advice. My, my um, suggestion would be um, that, uh, you know, as economists, when you're doing all these analysis, you, you would want to check the robustness of your results, right? So I, if I'm doing any inequality research and, you know, there are so many databases, I would definitely use all of them and then, you know, put in um, a caveat or maybe try to understand and how um, you know the different databases actually measure different things. So if you look at um, the case of Ghana, for instance, and if we, if we compare the income inequality that is um, reported by the companion and what we have with our national um, database, we can clearly understand we, we, from the methodology that they used, we can provide um, um, a reason, right, for why there's that difference. Because Ghana was never part of that um, um, database. So it's more like using a regression to predict what Ghana would be, given that, it, it, you know, it's a, it's, it's a country from sub-Saharan Africa, right? But then we know that countries in the region are very different, right? So in that case, that would be the reason for this um, difference. So I think the key here would be to understand how the different databases measure these different, um, you know, or the same um, income, um, you know, measures, so that that would help you to explain the differences. Other than that, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't, I cannot sit here and tell you, okay, use the um, <laughs> UNU wider database and forget the, um, you know, the World Bank database. I, I wouldn't be able to do that. But this is, this is my advice or my suggestion. Thanks. Yeah, so maybe uh, uh, to mention also, uh, I think one thing is uh, to look at the inconsistency. For example, when you talk of Kenya, uh, when you look at the three, for example, the three uh, measurements that we have, uh, that is, for example, our SIA and also uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, our uh, and maybe the the the, the weedy the weedy uh, original. You find that those two data, uh, those two are more like uh, trading together. Uh, but then you want to look at uh, how uh, was uh, weedy companion actually co uh, constructed. And in here uh, you will find that uh, you want to go into your data and see whether uh, do you have those kind of particulars that perhaps were considered in there. And for example, in our case, uh, we found that uh, most of the information that we missed uh, could have been uh, partly uh, what could have caused that 
kind of a scaling effect that we saw. But in terms of the trading, you see, it's like uh, uh, the, 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 same, the same measurements actually are uh, giving the same trading. Uh, so in a way then, uh, perhaps, uh, as mentioned by Monica here also, the robustness of the, of the data that you have, uh, does it really uh, speak uh, to, the, uh, to the kind of uh, issues, uh, that, uh, to the kind of differences that you are observing there? But again, I think I, I don't have that, uh, I, I can't really say for sure uh, that you need to choose one, but I think it's important that uh, you look at those which are more, which are looking more consistent uh, in terms of the measurement, in terms of the trading. Thanks. I think that one's being asked to make a judgment call as well, right? So it's a, like a wood from the trees issue. So in South Africa, for example, we've got n no database says we, that, we've, that we don't have a high in uh, inequality that's off the charts so high that, that everything that people worry about, about inequality, will, will permeate that society. That's the level sort of issue, right? Uh, the, the, the inequality doesn't change that quickly, uh, and so what's the big picture then? Uh, the big picture of the trends is that it stayed high. It stayed high over a very important part of our, of our history, uh, an, an important uh, of our sort of democratic era. It, it's remained high. That doesn't mean it stays the same. But that's our job to, to make sure that the you, you know that that two points are, are in the mix here. One that that inequality hasn't uh, hasn't declined, uh, and for a while we, that was a, a site of struggle with our government. They weren't very comfortable at all with us measurers uh, saying that. But but come 2011 or so, they wrote it into the national development plan as a fact. And then said, okay, what are we going to do about that? Now, that's our job, right, I think. But you've got to get that big picture level right. Uh, and and then, then it turns to the texture. Because if you're going to then give further advice about, okay, what are we going to do about this? You, you've got to bring a, an understanding. So I guess that's, that, that's my answer. Uh, one of our roles, perhaps, is to prevent people, you know, so if there's a, if somebody's favorite database exhibits some quick, uh, some quick change in inequality, and uh, either down or up, somebody's going to be happy with that. Now, is that really true, and should that be fed in as the main point of the narrative? That's a very important role, I think, for, for all of us, and it squares with the whole texture of the inequality. Okay, uh, th thank you. Uh, Finn Taff from the University of Copenhagen. I, I cannot uh, simply resist not, not, not to try to add in a little bit here um, because I have had some experiences with sort of these types of complications that arise when you're sitting there with different databases and so on. And, and the first point is that, that there simply is no substitute for getting to understand what are the underlying assumptions, what are the potential um, reasons that particular databases have been put together in particular ways. Um, and then maybe you do want to, when you have defined what your specific purpose is, then do look around and see, and for example, discover, ah, Professor Stephen Jenkins from London who is one of the most informed, bright, absolutely on top of this, has actually written a paper that's published on comparing the different databases, where he actually gives advice on what you should use and what you should not use. Um, so, so, I mean, now, unfortunately... Yeah, the, the, this is older versions, and uh, but I mean there are still some quite deep insights uh, in that, and I mean just to give you one provocative example, I mean one of the things that we and this is now a while back and things have evolved, but I mean some of us got really worried uh, when researchers started using the so-called salt version, the so-called SWID, of the WID database. Why? because they had basically plucked in numbers, the missing values had just been plucked in from an algorithm. So that inbuilt patterns in the data, which then actually affected the results. 
And this actually was the database that the IMF then used when they did a number of quite influential studies that have been published in the best of, of, of our journals and have been very influential and have certainly been changing the policy debates. But the question is whether we as researchers are happy with, with, with using what is clearly, um, what would I say, um, a data set where you have inbuilt through an algorithm, uh, connections in the data w which may not be there in reality. So, I mean, the, uh, the trick here is to get to understand what is actually being done, to understand what might be the particular uh, institutional interest that might lie behind a particular uh, data set, and then really get to understand that. And Stephen Dengen's paper is still very worthwhile reading to come on the top of these issues. Sorry, this got a bit long. But let there are other people, then I'll come back. Thanks, Carlos. Thanks. Um, yeah, you know, what Finn was talking about, this comparison of databases, um, you know, I, the paper by Stephen that you're talking about was in this special issue that Nora and I edited, and I think it was a, an interesting attempt to compare these compilations. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that I think with particularly under Carlos's uh, leadership here, has done an, an amazing job in reacting to some of the critiques that were made in, in Stephen's papers. Um, and, and I won't even comment on, on SWID. I completely agree with uh, Finn. But my real question to, to you guys is, um, is just to tell you a little bit about the Latin American example and then ask you whether you know, that's the plan for ACER. And, and maybe I should know that already. I apologize. But what happened in Latin America was that there were all these different uh, you know, national statistical institutes producing the surveys, much as you have everywhere else. And then uh, this one university in La Plata, Argentina, right, uh, Sadlas, uh, well, the University of La Plata, a couple of people there created this little center with a small seed grant from the World Bank, uh, where what they did is they had a lot of PhD students and they worked uh, on the data collected in, in Latin America doing a soft harmonization, not, not quite at the list level where, you know, variables are harmonized consistently, but at least some kind of harmonization on the, on the income uh, side. And, and they put it out as a comparable thing. I think that you referred to this earlier. And they had a deal with the World Bank, which means that Povkalnet, which is one of the series here and one of the series in WID, uses the Sadler's data. This meant that what Sadler's did effectively means that what the data they get and treat is the Latin American data that, that predominates over the international discussion. CEPAL still has its different ones and so on, but so, so the, as I listen to you guys, the question is, and again, I'm sorry, maybe, it is, maybe I should know this already, but is this exactly what you're doing? Is, is this what you're planning to do, is getting these deals with all these, these national statistical institutes, bring them in and harmonize them in this way and create, that, that's the plan, right? Uh, because if that is the plan, and, and, and also I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, minimize the importance of, of, as a former staff member, we have Haiyan here who's a current staff member, but as a former staff member of the bank, if you get you know, the bank's experts, which are you know, serious people in the poverty global practice looking at this stuff, if you get them to look at it with you and say, okay, we're going to take the Povkal data for Africa from these guys, then you are going to be in the saddlest position and you're going to be basically in business. Sorry. Thank you very much. Hi, thanks. I'm Marcus Yanti from Stockholm University, and um, th this is a question which is directed to any of any of the um, panelists. Do you I have a question? Then kind of follow up comment. Do you make use of national accounts data in in kind of standardizing the series across time? It it strikes me that that for instance one of the uses for that after suitable kind of weeding out of, of, of different pieces would be to, for instance, the growth incidence curves um, that you get for Africa, the, that should essentially coincide with, with household sector income growth uh, across these countries. So it's, I'm, I'm not suggesting a kind of trying to replicate what the, what the kind of any distributional national accounts and also not suggesting that you think of national accounts as being God's final truth on, on income growth, but, but there is, at least as a, in some kind of 
th th there are pieces of information that can be sifted out, which can be helpful in figuring out if your sur standardized survey results are being consistent with, with the national accounts number. So the question here is, is, do you make any use of the national accounts in doing this standardizing? Um, and if you don't, then I'm kind of suggesting you do. <laughs> Well, I just have one additional comment, maybe also another question. You know, it's great that on the discussion from Finn right, and uh, from uh, from Chico yeah, and from uh, Makazanti, very very helpful. Um, also from 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 the panel, right? Um, but then um, my my. My kind of follow-up, up uh, question, right? Is that in that case? So let us say, you know, coming from the ground, right? From the local viewpoint. Well, I guess you know the most about South Africa than all of us. Then of course you can benchmark the data for South Africa. You can put your finger, right, on whether the data makes sense, the chance makes sense, right? Um, but then, but then you know, like, but then from an international viewpoint, from an across country viewpoint. Maybe what uh, makes a lot of sense, right? The theory makes a lot of sense for a particular country, but maybe in terms of cross-country comparability, you know, uh, it may not be so, right? So, so I wonder, you know, maybe can you comment a bit on the chat off, you know, between like uh, nationality, I mean, of the data in a way, and then you know the internationality of the data, right? So that we have a, you know, we can bring it to you guys for more comparison. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. A lot of questions. Very short time. Wants to answer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, maybe to reflect a bit on the national and national accounts, uh, perhaps, uh, 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 of course, we've not used the national accounts, uh, but uh, we have used something very close to that uh, in the in the use of what we call CEQ, uh, where you use, uh, of course, some national account numbers and also survey data. And we are, uh, in that case, uh, it's like uh, we come up with an income concept, uh, which is comparable uh, to some extent uh, with, uh, uh, with a companion. Uh, to, to this extent, maybe uh, uh, we are able to compare uh, that uh, with the uh, with the companion, and uh, to some extent, then you could say that uh, the CQ was, uh, uh, which is of, of course also uh, an, an income kind of a measurement, was very close. Uh, so to say, uh, with with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, original video, which has be, been using a consumption a consumption per capita uh, data. Okay. Yeah, so I'll start with uh, Chico, and um, I mean, that, that, that's the dream, right? Uh, and it was written into the original uh, proposal when ASAP proposed itself to the African Research Universities Alliance as the Centre of Excellence on African uh, Inequality and Poverty. And uh, um, that, yeah, that is still the aspiration. And so under who's, who's yeah, who funded our sort of, the AFD funded our first few years of, of work and with a strong commitment to exactly that, um, it's, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we need some lessons in political economy as well from you because it's, it, I don't know how that came together, but in the African context it sounds almost Miraculous. Why we proposed it was because there is a data centre at the University of Cape Town uh, called uh, Data First. That's where uh, Takwanisa uh, worked for a long, long time, and um, uh, that's been doing exactly that for South Africa and like getting harmonised weights so that you can do comparisons over time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it has the aspiration of doing that into the continent. Uh, but, yeah, so we need to find, yeah, I think your, your point about needing to integrate in with the, with the World Bank and things, maybe that's the way to push, push forward a bit. Uh, we have that aspiration, and this particular project actually was extremely helpful to us as well because people don't naturally dive into these issues of data quality. They just don't. And, uh, and so I think ASA did quite well in that regard, but the, you can always do better. And I think this project has pushed us to do better 
uh, it's, it's in our genes at the University of Cape Town. That's what we do. We run surveys and, and stuff. That's not uniformly true. Uh, and so you need some vehicle to set up the institutional capacity. Uh, I guess what you're talking about is a st much stronger central role, and I think that is the way to go. Actually, we've spent a long time building the capacity in each of the nodes, and I think that's incredibly valuable. But somebody's got to run a project like this. So that, that's a quick, um, yeah, that's our dream. So yes, thank you for um, reminding us. Um, oh, there, we, there is some work, uh, we have done some work in the distributed national accounts uh, f sort of framework, but not a lot actually. Um, and, and some of it, obviously there, there was a bit of a, an allergic reaction in a sense because you know, at some at at some stage, the, the the you know there was all this using in the growth in the growth uh, cross country growth equation literature. There was use of household surveys for the distribution, but then a, some sort of reweighting around some national counts means that was doing a lot of violence to what was going on. So that wasn't a, a good start at, uh, uh, in in the, on the continent, um, and. Uh, but, but your point is extremely well taken that we need to use the data that's available in the, in the sort of triangulation. I, th I think it's an excellent point. Um, and we'll have to answer your point later, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you uh, very, very much. Okay, thank you very much all of the, all the presenters.